Hi there, my name is AJ Smith. I'm a primary school teacher from Southwark in South London. Welcome to my channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about my Notion setup. So if you haven't heard of Notion, it's an incredible productivity app. It's available on all the platforms on Android, iOS, Mac, and Windows. And basically, it is an all-in-one planning productivity system. So previous to this, I was using a paper planner. I was using um, a calendar. I was using a paper diary. I was using Todoist. Uh, Evernote, all sorts of apps to get all of my planning done that I need to do for school and for my personal life. I moved over to Todoist about two weeks ago and there was kind of quite a steep learning curve in terms of working out how linked databases worked. But once I'd watched enough YouTube tutorials, I was able to come up with a pretty satisfying setup. And unlike a lot of productivity, the initial outlay required in terms of time and effort and learning has paid off. I haven't touched a paper planner in, in about two weeks now. I absolutely love Notion. Um, and I want to talk you through my setup. This was the first page that I made in Notion uh, based on some video tutorials that I watched as a kind of landing page uh, to help me get organized. And it has an inbox. So if I'm busy during the day and I have tasks that I know I need to do, but I don't have time to do that um, uh, tagging and to put it in the correct project, it goes here into my inbox. So for example, I could be, uh, you know, I could just suddenly think oh, I actually need to do start of the week certificate. Okay, so I can just put it in there and I can give it a due date, say tomorrow. And then when I'm on the train on the way home, I like to go through those tasks and put them in the right project, put them in the right places, make sure that they go into the right pages. And then I've got a due soon list. And this is different from, I'll show you my daily planner, which is kind of like my daily driver that I look at all day long. This is if I have a little bit of extra capacity, then I can come here to my due soon list and I can see what kind of things I could tick off from what I have to do in the next week or so. So say if I was you know, not too busy, I can look and I can say, well, actually I could put my maths planning into Notion today. Um, next up, what I'm gonna show you is my year six page. So I'm a year six teacher. This is the page for my class. I think I will get around to improving this quite a lot, bringing in some of the data from elsewhere on Notion, because at the moment, all I have is my task board for year six broken down by what kind of task it is. So a paperwork task, if I'm sitting down, I'm, I'm gonna do some paperwork, I think. I need to fill in my groups template, um, but I also need to update a spreadsheet. I've got admin video, planning, and other, other things there. Um, and then this is my uh, the way that I record, uh, say, mark books, things like that. So this is um, an example class. This is not my real class. Uh, and I use something very similar to this with my real class. They bring in their reading records every day um, and I can see who's done them and who hasn't done them. And I used to have paper form on a uh, clipboard and that would get really tatty. And I, there was no easy way of like collating all that information. Now I just go down the list. Ellie, have you done it? Yes, fantastic. Uh, Ellis, no, he hasn't done it. Josh is not here today, so he gets an A. Took me literally a minute to set this up. And I can clearly see like looking along here, you know, Alice, except for today when she's not in, has done it every day. But Aliyah, we need to have a conversation because you've only done it twice this week. Uh, I have these folders, uh, these databases here where I input my maths planning. So this is uh, going to link through as you'll see into my daily planner but I sit down and once a week I go through and I put in my maths planning so this is this week's um, we're looking at percentage and everything's centralized we use the same maths planning which is fantastic uh, so I just drag it in from that I just bring it in from the textbook you've got the chapter the lesson number the date when I'm going to teach it and whether or not I've inputted those into good notes so I use good notes on my iPad for doing the annotation in class and I'll do a video about that at some point as well English is a little bit more in-depth because the planning is a little bit more complicated. And you can see here that this is in calendar view, which I really, really like. Um, it's almost like looking at your timetable across the week. And you can see like today, I don't teach English, but tomorrow I'm doing this adding notes to plan with a shared right of the introduction in the background. Um, you can see it's a planning and a shared right task linked to the newspaper kind of writing. And that's World War One is our topic. I've got the resources for it, but I haven't yet written the model that's on something I'll do later today. Uh, and say, for example, we didn't have time to do that on Friday, I can literally just drag, drop that into Monday, and that will appear on my daily planner on Monday instead of on Friday, which is what I love about this. Um, my other subjects as well, again, same principle. So for example, if yesterday I didn't have time to do this end of topic assessment in history, I can just drag that over and then it will appear in my daily planner on Friday. I'm not having to like scribble stuff out. I'm not having to 
go in, jiggle things around, see if things fit. I can all just see everything at a glance. And this is bringing in from um, the table view. So the table here has the subject, it has the date on which I'm gonna teach these things and the lesson tags. Some of these you can see I've planned and some of these like these ones that say new booklet required to plan, they're there for me to see all these blank ones for well-being. I need to go look at the booklet, look at what they're gonna teach, what they're gonna learn. So that's really great. I should tick these to say that these are taught as well. Um, okay, and then, so that's my year six kind of day-to-day -day planning. That's my um, dashboard, which I don't actually use as much as I thought it was. I might integrate that into what I'm about to show you next. So this is my daily planner, and this has replaced my paper planning. I don't have a paper planner anymore. I love this page so much. I'm really happy with how this has come out. Obviously, I'll update it as time goes on. It's pretty simple at the moment, but I think simple is good. I think simple is what it should be. So I'll talk you through three major, uh, two major parts to it, the planning and the task list. So today's task list pulls through from my master list of tasks. It's filtered um, to say things I haven't done, things that are due today or due before today. Hopefully not too many of those. And you can see like I'm working from home today. It's my planning day. So I've got some paperwork to do. I've got to record a video. I've got a personal task, which is to uh, put something in the post that I've sold on eBay. And I've got three tasks to do as part of my RE planning project, which I'll show you in a bit. And that's great. As soon as I say that one of those is done, it disappears from that list. So it's just your bog standard traditional um, uh, task list, I guess. But then this is really important for me. This pulls through from my planning sheet and it shows me what I've said I will do today. So I'm teaching a double maths lesson or my cover teacher is teaching a double maths lesson today. And I can see that's all fine because that's in my good notes. No English today because there's double maths. And my cover teacher is going to teach guided reading. Um, and so that's in here as well. And if I wanted to, um, I don't need to particularly for this because it's all centrally planned. But I could open up Wind in the Willows and I could type in notes about, say, for example, read page 64, 5 to page 100. And then I could write a list of questions underneath that. Um, so it really is like an incredible tool for lesson planning, something that I perhaps didn't expect when I thought I was going to move over to, uh, to Notion. I didn't expect to be doing all my lesson planning in this. Um, as well as the daily planner, so that's great. As soon as I wake up in the morning, I open that on my iPad, I have a coffee. I look at it when I'm on the train. I uh, Literally, as soon as I get into my classroom, I don't do anything. I get my iPad out, put it on my desk, and I have this up. Um, basically for the whole day so I can see what I'm doing. I love it so much. Um, then on the commute on the way home, I've made this page. It's literally just duplicated it. I changed the filters. I can actually get rid of this task that I just made. This is a duplicate. Um, I changed the filters to be tomorrow rather than today. I can see my list of things to do tomorrow. I can see the maths that I'm doing tomorrow, chapter review. I can see that they're gonna need their workbooks for that. I can see the English that I'm doing tomorrow. I can see I need to create that model. Um, and I can see that I'm teaching a wellbeing lesson and an RE lesson tomorrow as well. So I love this. I'm really happy with how this has turned out. It's a really effective planning and it's not overkill either. I think often with organization, it's a time suck. So I know for me, when I'm at my most busy, that's when I suddenly have the idea that I'm gonna do a bullet journal. I'm gonna spend two hours planning that and I'm gonna make it beautiful and I need to go to Muji to buy new pens to do that. Uh, well, with Notion, yes, there's an initial time outlay in knowing how it works, in setting up the um, pages and documents. Once you've done that, uh, you know, aside from a little bit of fiddling, that time investment pays off tenfold. Everything is in one place. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. I love it. Uh, let me show you two more traditional project management pages. That's my RE curriculum and my professional development. So in England, we teach RE, which is religious education. Um, I'm the RE lead for my school. Uh, and I used to be a secondary RE teacher. It's actually how I got into primary teaching is doing primary RE. Uh, and so I basically manage and plan the RE for the whole school, which I love doing. And this is how I organize it. It used to be all on paper. I used to have it stuck with blue tack to the inside of my cupboard door, but now I do it like this. So my RE development plan, no, let's talk at the top. So at the top, I've got my termly plans. So I can see spring one, what I'm gonna be teaching or not, what other teachers are gonna be teaching in RE across all the units. Hinduism in year five, I can see the outline of lessons there, really minimalistic. I don't need loads of detail because it's all on um, documents in our shared drive. Uh, I can see that 
going towards this, the kind of final deadline is going to be January the 3rd for my knowledge organizer, but I've already planned the PowerPoint. I've got the booklet. I know that's in the works. I'm doing that today and the medium term plan I'm doing today as well. Um, I think the, these pages could be improved a bit. They're a bit minimalistic, maybe too minimalistic, but I like them anyway. They're handy. Um, and I'll do one of those for each of the terms as I go. Then I can see here, this is my overall task board showing every task I've got to do to get that RE schemes of work for spring one finished. And it's sorted by date. So I can see today I'm working on those three. Tomorrow I need to finish the Judaism booklet. And then next week and over the Christmas holidays, I've got a few more things to do. Um, then this is my much longer term. So RE development plan is something that we do at the start of the year. Um, and it's basically, it's, it's for the whole year. It's the vision for the whole year. And I can see, for example, I've completed those autumn one and two schemes of works. I'm working on my spring one and I've got lots in the not started column. That's fine. All of these are due to start either next term or the term afterwards. Reviewing, um, seeking feedback, observing. They're all things that I have planned for then. I know also I can look at this and say, you know, if I have a bit of extra capacity, well, maybe I could start to review those RE schemes. Maybe I could start to think about seeking feedback. Um, so it's really good and I like having it there just visible to me on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's how I use this for curriculum planning. Uh, again, it's more of a traditional project management kind of system in that sense. And then professional development is what teachers do to build up their professional portfolio, to improve their teaching. So this, for me, this whole section is probably my least well-developed, but something that I'm really happy with um, and will develop further going forward when I have a bit of extra time. So I've got CPD tasks. This just pulls tasks out that I have with the tag CPD in them. You can see I've got lead practitioner training tomorrow. That's in my Google calendar as well. Um, but I've also got three tasks with no due date because I'd like, you know, they're either ongoing or they're just kind of more aspirational than actual task based. Um, you can see my reading list now. Actually, my real reading list is much longer than this and I need to update this. But you've got the books here, you've got the authors, in progress finished, uh, and the media type and the topic. This is my blog workflow. So I write a blog for my teaching and you can see each of these, these are all completed now. Um, but I can click on this and I can see, well, this is the blog post. This was the topic, uh, drafted and published it and the URL. And I'm starting to get into videos as well. So I'm thinking about videos that I could write. Here uh, in this one, I've got the script I actually wrote inside Notion here. Um, and it's scripted. And again, I see so many beautiful YouTube content workflows that this could all be vastly improved, but I'm happy with how it is at the moment. I want to use Notion more as a knowledge base. I want to get more of my like note taking into Notion. I want to get more of my um, information about teaching into Notion. So I'm trying to develop a CPD notes library. I love good notes. I use good notes all the time, um, but I haven't imported much of it into here yet, but it's actually really simple because you just import the PDF. So this is a talk that I heard. It was at the History Association um, annual conference, Christine Council, who I love. Um, she gave a talk about history curriculum planning. And these are my notes on that from good notes. And um, I just exported them and imported them into here. I love that they're all in one place. It's great and I can just print these out. I can look at these whenever I want. And that's what I wanna get more into. I wanna get more into using this as a knowledge base rather than using this just as um, like a planning activity. So um, yeah, that's kind of my big development point. It's gonna be finding ways to import more of my knowledge, use this more as a wiki. I think that's everything. I mean, I have a personal tab. It's literally just a to-do list. It's not very exciting. Um, and perhaps there's more like habit tracking or something like that I could be doing. Apart from that, that's my um, Notion setup at the moment. I love Notion, all in one place, everything linked. Again, that time investment that you put into it initially is, is absolutely worth it in the end. My minor gripe is that I should qualify for a, a pro account as an educator, but because I have a .sch.uk email address, I don't qualify. And I've been in contact and they've just said, no, you don't qualify, which is kind of annoying. But given that this product is free for personal use, given that I've never needed that additional capacity for storage yet, um, I can't complain. Notion free, this incredible, powerful tool. Literally, I kind of, when I first saw a video about it, I was like, oh, going onto the app store, expecting it to be like $24.99. Amazing, love Notion to bits. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd like to do more videos about how I organize my life as a teacher um, and more kind of tips and tricks on using technology. I'm not like a huge, might seem like I am, but I'm not a huge tech person. I do still like to use a lot of um, kind of old fashioned 
uh, ways of teaching. But I think when tech improves your life and makes it a lot easier, then absolutely we should be using it as teachers. So that's my kind of um, ethos behind this. Do like and subscribe, share this video with people who you think might find it interesting. Even if you're not a teacher, maybe it was interesting to look at how a different profession uses the setup. Um, yeah, thank you so much. I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye.